Okay. Um, here we go. So imagine a lot of you are locked inside and feeling a little bit bored maybe. Um, and uh, I thought it might be nice to give you some projects. So, um, and it's good for me because I need to practice too, always. <clears throat> so, if you've got a guitar, it's going to be in dad fad. So, D, A, D, F sharp. And um, this is the Joni Mitchell tuning. Um, the big one. And I'll play you a bit of Daisy. And when I, when I show you the chords, I'll make sure I have the um, fretboard in sight. Um, it's a little bit hard because you can't see my fingers for finger picking, but I think finger picking is very um, personal. Um, I think you should do it whatever way feels comfortable. Like, I don't rest my finger on the fretboard. I let my fingers float. So um, I'll leave that up to you, but I'll play a bit of Daisy get us started and then we'll um, look at it in a bit more detail. So. <laughs> fourth fret on the third string. And I was always taught that you should hum along when you're playing a sort of melodic line, that you should hum along because that helps you remember the intonation that you're playing. Um, so If you've got a guitar, I've no idea how many of you actually have guitars or are interested in that, but let's try that. So, third string, fourth fret. shapes in the song I think that's right um, apart from the little instrumental bit and the two chord shapes I'm not actually a trained musician so I don't know the names of the chords um, I call this one the beginning one I call it a four shape because it looks like a four so that would be Bottom string, fret two, two, open string, first fret. Second fret, second fret, open string, first fret. And I, um, I'm gonna, you know, teach you the, the, the way to play the song, but also I think what's more interesting is how you use the shapes in this tuning. Because this is the, um, you know, I've looked at love from both sides now, from up and down, and still somehow it 
those life's illusions that I recall, I really don't know life at all. Slightly not the right key for me, but so many great songs were written in this tuning. Daisy um, line follows a very straightforward scale. Um, I don't know much more about what kind of scale it is. I only know things by <laughs> listening. So I'll show you the scale in this very uh, provocative angle. The scale goes like this, and you can once you know the scale, you could you could put the song together by ear. So. It's that shape I just taught you, what I call number four, not very professionally. It's pretty beautiful up there. So you just work all the way up to the 12th fret. And the shape when you get to the 12th fret is what I call shape one, because it looks like a one. There's no more intellectual than that. And that might be confusing to some of you country cats who call out numbers for chords. So it's not that system that I'm using. I'm using the basic system <laughs> of what chords look like. So that's, that's what I call the number one shape chord. And on the 12th fret, that looks like 12, 12, open string, 12. So where the other chord shape was the four, which is a minor, I believe. That's just a flattened third, so that makes the chord a minor. wrong. Uh, so that shape happens when you need it to. <laughs> so there's that shape and then you're back to the number four shape. Back to the number four shape. So first shape, first shape, second shape, second shape. working your way up in moving up two frets at a time then one fret then one fret then two frets <laughs> two frets and one fret now I can't really show you in detail so you, you you should do it by ear because that's the best way to learn so those are the basic ones and uh, when you get to putting the song together it would go like this so you would do the rundown that's a nice bit. You're going from that one shape and you're flattening the third and making it a minor. Wants to see me. You're going up to the top of the neck. Daisy's alright, she's up all night. Down at the docks running an open home. I think that you look at her own. Um, and so there's a slight variation on that shape, that number four shape, as I was saying. So at the 12th fret, it's that. 12, uh, 12, 0, 12, 12. And then the number four shape, where, where, where at the bottom of the neck we were playing it, oh, playing, uh, 
I guess that would be 11, 11, 0, 11. We're just slightly varying it to move that finger to there. So it's now 11, blank, 11, 10. And um, that just, that's obviously just an octave because those two strings are the same. maybe. Um, let's try the rundown again. I don't know, I'm still seeing how your comments, which is slightly getting in the way of the, the guitar, which I haven't foreseen. Um, so if you, if you do have a guitar, let's just go through that and then we'll move on to something else. And you can practice that or if you already have a version of it that you do, you can send it to me and I can have a look at it and um, I'm sure there's some interesting versions of it that you guys do. Uh, but I would explore this tuning uh, to, its, to its full potential because that shape is the, is the kind of what I think of as the, um, it's like the central shape of this tuning. Because if you take off just your top finger, oh, so sorry, didn't mean to do that. If you take off your middle finger, um, you, you get a different chord, but that you can move that shape in the same way. So. And then if you take off the other finger, you get that beautiful, I think of it as the Jenny Mitchell. sequence in itself. So lovely. Um, so that's it. Let's try doing the rundown and we'll do that first little bit of uh, Daisy and then maybe let's move on to Rambling Man. Um, so the rundown is this kind of, again I'm not Probably not the best candidate for a guitar teacher because I don't know any of the names of anything. Um, but if this was in a normal tuning, I would think of that as the pentatonic shape of a scale, though it is not a pentatonic scale, but I only see things visually. Um, so, going from the top. secrets by the way because a lot of my songs are written in this tuning is uh, you can do all kinds of because it's kind of a chord already it's a very easy place to make nice melodic um, chord it's with only two uh, two notes well using two fingers and so in Daisy I do this you can't really see a bit 7th fret, ninth fret, and then 6th and 7th, that's not right. It's just lovely. So, um, that's probably about it for Daisy. 
I could, um, I could uh, go into a bit more detail, but maybe for another time. Um, but while we're here, uh, something that's probably a bit easier, possibly because you might be more familiar with it. Um, there's a couple of people asking what the tuning is. The tuning is D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. The journey tuning. Um, so, rambling man. It's like the inverse, it starts with kind of the inverse of the four position. So, what I call the four chord, I'm not claiming that is correct. In fact, it's probably very confusing for quite a lot of you, but that is how my brain works. So welcome to my brain. That's what I call the four shape. So if you take off those fingers, you hold on to that uh, index finger, and you put your uh, fourth finger on the second fret on the top string, and you keep your middle finger somewhere where it's not offensive. Um, you slide it up two frets. That's the beginning of Rambling Man. And then you've kind of got that shape again, that, that full shape, but just without the top string. And you're again just moving that up two frets. And off. Oh, oh, it's really not in the right key for me. Oh, naive little me, very low. Asking what things you have seen. You are vulnerable in your head. Your scream and your wail to your dead. And then the chorus is the same. <clears throat> oh, give me two. A rambling man Not quite, there's another little chord there Let it always be known That I was who I am And again Oh, give me to a rambling man Let it always be known That I was who I am There's nothing else in that song apart from the, the little middle eight, which is sort of uh, fourth fret, uh, to, uh, bottom string, fourth fret, second fret, and then the rest is open. It's funny how the first chords that you come to is a bit too for me. So that's really kind of it for now. Um, I mean, every you can play every Towns Van Zandt song pretty much. Uh, in this tuning. Um, oh, why does she sing? Her sad song for me, I'm not the one. And then, of course, if you weren't here earlier, you've got the Leonard. Suzanne takes you down to her place by the river. Uh, and Joni. I've looked at clouds from both sides now. So that's all, <laughs> that's all I've got for you, to be honest. Um, but we can do more of these and we can do much, much simpler ones. I'll do one in a standard tuning maybe. Um, and uh, I'll try and figure out a way of framing it so I don't keep you know, to do, giving you the finger and all that stuff, it's not so good. Um, and thank you all for tuning in and uh, Send me what you're working on, whether you're working on a cover or whether you're just exploring this tuning and keep working and keep uh, making beautiful music and um, keep each other safe and happy. And uh, yeah, can't wait to see more of you. These comments are quite intense. Um, yeah, be safe, be well, and we'll do it again sometime, okay? <laughs>